Okay, so in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through the script on my blog uh, to help you create a list view when you have a list that exceeds your list view threshold. Um, just so you understand what we talk about with this list view threshold, let's take a look at my current Office 365 site. And you see here that I have a list called master zip code that has 42,550 items in it. That's a lot more than the 5,000 item limit uh, in SharePoint. Now if we look at this list, you can see that we're able to actually you know, search through the list, page through the data. Um, I could look for specific zip code if I wanted to. And it will bring up that zip code. So you, know, you can still get to your data for lists that contain more than 5,000 items. However, if you want to really create a view that's usable for the user, um, that maybe it's grouped by something, you can't really do that. So here if we go into our list settings and we look at this view and let's say that maybe I want to group this view by the state. So I'll come in here and select group by and I'm going to group by state and click OK here. So, right, I can't view this now because because of that group by I've it's not allowing me to, to create that view because the list has more than 5,000 entries in it. So what do we do? How can we create list views that are not just these flat tables where we page through every single thing? So we're going to use uh, some JavaScript and SharePoint's REST to create a list view that is actually usable. So let's take a look. I've broken the script up into a few different scripts so that you guys can take a look at it, maybe understand it better. Um, here in this first script, we're including uh, the jQuery file here I'm using jQuery 1.11. <clears throat> we're also including the data tables library and the CSS for data tables. And here we have a table which is going to be the table that holds our list view. And in this table, I give it an ID. I'm calling it zip view table. And then I have a table head that has all of the column headings that I want for my list view. So you would create a table, an HTML table, give it a unique ID, and then create a table head row where you specify all the column headers you want for your list view. So I want one that's going to show county, zip code, city, time zone, area codes, latitude, longitude, and population. Okay? And uh, then here in the script, as soon as the page finished, lo finished loading, we're calling get zips. And here's our get zips function. And in the get zips function, we are calling the REST query in SharePoint 2013 of get by title. And we're saying we want to get it from the master zip code list. I'm also telling it that I want to select the ID, title, zip, primary city, those different fields that I need. And then at the end here, I'm saying give me the top 5,000 because by default, it's not going to return 5,000 items. And 5,000 items is the max that we can determine, that we can return. I'm also specifying here in the header that I want to return minimal metadata. This is using that new JSON Lite that's been implemented for SharePoint 2013 REST. So I'm going to get back less metadata and it's going to make my query perform faster. What I really like about REST is I can take this query and I can just pop it into my browser here. So I'll open my web page back up. And I just pop this query into the browser, append it to my site name press enter here. It's going to take a minute. It's returning 5,000 rows. It'll take a second. But see, here's all those results. So you can actually look at your results from your REST query in your browser so you can make sure you're getting the correct data back. And this is also how you can know what those field names are. Here's the field name state. Here's the field name county. So you can look at your return REST query so you can know which fields your, what your actual field names are. So jumping back to our script, I'm making that REST query. I'm just telling it to return 5,000 items. Then here is when the call is done and we have our data back, I'm going to call the data tables method on our HTML table. And here's where I'm specifying that I want the data for this table to come from my REST query results, which is in data.value. Then I'm saying that I want to display the county, zip, primary city, and these are the fields I want to display in my table. And these fields match those headers, like the first one is county, the first thing in my header is county. So you can see that those two have to line up. 
And this also allows me to give a different column header than the actual value. This is the property from the JSON object. So there's a property called county that we saw actually here in this REST query. You can see that this is where I get the county from. That's how I know that it's data.county. All right. And then here I'm saying that I want to display 100 items at a time. I'm also putting in a special thing that they have for data tables where I'm saying I want to display the paging on the top and bottom of my list view so that you can you don't have to scroll all the way down to do some paging. And there you go. So that's all there is to it, right? I'm doing a REST query to return 5,000 items, and then I'm going to stick it in the data, ta the data tables table. So let's copy this script. I'm going to open up my site now. And I am going to go to my site assets directory and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to create a JavaScript file and I'll call it zip.js. And let's paste in that script that I just showed you. We'll save it. Now we can go back into our site here. And I'm going to go to my site pages library. And I am going to create a new web part page. We'll call it zip. And we'll put it in our site pages library. Now I'm going to add a web part. And that web part's going to be a media and content content editor. I'm going to edit the web part and link it to the script, which was in site assets and I called it zip.js and we'll apply that. So give it a second here because again we're returning 5,000 rows. It takes a second. One, two, three, four, five. So about five seconds. So that's actually not too bad. It took five seconds to return 5,000 rows and here they are. They're in that data tables library because that's what I said to do with the results. Um, I could, I've got some search capabilities here so I can type in some searching and it searches uh, the list for that information. So this is kind of cool. I can do sorting so I can sort by county. I can sort by zip code or by city. So this is great. But the thing is it's only 5,000 entries. I have 42,000 entries in the list. And when you do a search here, it's only searching those 5,000 items that are in memory. So although this is starting to be kind of useful, it's not getting us there yet. And what we really need to do is we need to structure our REST query so that it doesn't bring back more than 5,000 items. So that we know that any REST query we send to this list will only bring back less than 5,000 and then we can work with that as a list view. And a good one to do that with is the state. So we're going to change our script so that a user can enter the state and it will bring back all the zip codes for just that state. So if we look at our next script here, it's just got a few additions to it. I have added a little input text box with an ID of state ID where when they press the key up on key up it's going to call our get zips function. So I'm no longer going to call the get zips when the page loads. I'm going to do it on the key up of this input box. I've got my same table set up here. Then here's our get zips function now. So what happens on this get zips function is it's going to get the value for whatever state abbreviation the user enters. And if that length, if they've entered two characters, that means it's you know abbreviation for a state. So if it's two characters, it's then going to query our make our rest query. And now I've added a filter so that it will return just those zip codes for the state that equals whatever they entered into that state text box. And then we're going to go through the same logic again to build up our list view. I've also added a little header down here so it just shows them a title of the list view saying I'm showing the zip codes for this state. All right, so basically same thing as before, except I'm filtering that list by a state that a user enters into this text box that we've added to the screen. So let's take this script. Refresh our page with it, save it. And I'll refresh again. And here we have a little text box where you can put a state abbreviation. So I could put in AR for Arkansas. Give it a second. And here we have the zip information for Arkansas. And you can see it's only returning 709 entries. So we know all of the entries for Arkansas are in this list. 
So we can page through it if we want to. We can search. We want to search for Little Rock. We can see all the zip codes for Little Rock, North Little Rock. Maybe we want to just look for uh, Harrison. And we can see here the zip codes for Harrison, Arkansas. So here again, we're getting a, ni a neat little list view with some good search capabilities. We're doing a search on something of more than 5,000 items. We get sorting. You can see it's, it's actually behaving fairly quickly. Even if we choose a state like Texas that has a lot of zip codes, it'll take a couple of seconds, but it's still not that bad, just a few seconds. So we can search then, I'm gonna search for Austin. And it's showing me those entries for Austin. Maybe San Antonio, right? So all fine and dandy, but what we really wanna do and what users like is to do some grouping, right? And that's something that you absolutely cannot do with a list view that has more than 5,000 items. So what we're gonna do in our next script is we're going to add another script, another library to our script. It's called datatables.rowgrouping, and this is an add-on for data tables. The link to the script is in my blog. And I've put some comments in here for you, so if you go to implement this script, this is the script as it is on my blog there for you. Still have the input box. Whenever you press a key, it's gonna call get zips. We have the same table that we had before. But now we've added a couple of classes. We've got expanded group class and a collapse group class for styling for how do we want to style our group headers when the row is expanded and collapsed, right? So I'm going to show a minus sign whenever the group is expanded and a plus sign when it's collapsed. So because you can actually click and expand and collapse these. Here's my get zips function again, and it is the same as it was before. I'm still getting the results for a state. What's changed now is I've added some additional logic to this data tables query to implement the row grouping. And the way this works is it's going to group on the first column in my data table. So what that first column is, it's gonna turn that into a group in the list view. You can look at the uh, documentation for row grouping and you can actually choose different columns to group by, but the default is to group by that first column. All right, so same function as before, getting the states, getting the zip codes for a state, putting it through the same table ta tables, but now we've done the row grouping for that first column, which in our case is actually the county. And here you can actually specify the label header that you want before that. So I'm putting the word county before it. All right, so let's take this script and we will add that, delete that, refresh the page, save it, and we'll refresh this page one more time. And now when I enter a state, you see I now have grouped by the counties. Right, took that first row and made it into a group. So now we've got grouping and you can expand and collapse on it. You can search by that group. If I was to do a search for Baxter, which is at Baxter County, you can see it's just doing a search for those things in Baxter County. If I want to search for Boone County, if I spell it right, Boone. So there is Boone County and there's also the County of Logan County, which has a city called Booneville. So it is going to show all of that. All right, so that's how easily you can get some row grouping, create a list view um, using REST and a couple of jQuery libraries. If we wanted to take this one step further, and I do have one I've taken one step further, I'm not gonna show you guys a script for it. Sorry, I mean, this is, uh, I gotta keep some secrets up my sleeve, but let's, let's take a look at what you can do by taking this just one step further. So I've refreshed the page with my other updated script, my magic script that you guys don't have. And let's put in a state abbreviation of Arkansas. So now I've got a little working on it thing. So it tells the user, hey, something's going on, right? Working on it. It's gray and then it turns white. So here's Texas. But now I've also added a checkbox. Let's say right now it's a flat list view, but I want to group it by the county. So all I have to do is click the checkbox. And now it will be grouped by the county when it comes back. So now our counties are get different styling on the headers. So it looks a little bit nicer. And you can also, let's say I want to open up one of these items. I've now added a click event to the row. So if a user clicks on a row, it will open up the display form for that entry. And now a user can go and edit that entry, uh, view the entry, delete the entry, or whatever they want to do. So you get, again, more usability like an actual list view here. Um, 
yeah, and I guess that's it. So, uh, so we've added the ability, you know, to make a little gray working on it, so you know it's going, what's something's happening. It's not just sitting there. We've added this group by checkbox if you want to make it dynamic where you group by it or not, and then we've added to where when you click on a row, it will open up the display form. And you can keep adding to this because this is client side stuff. You could keep adding more and more and more and more to it. Um, so even though you've got this list view threshold issue in SharePoint and Office 365, you do have some options to get around it and still create some usable list views without spending money on an on a expensive piece of software. So anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you learned something and uh, good luck.